Bring on the front one. Oh, dear. We're, we're okay with this one. <laughs> Uh, I got a sore throat, but it's weather now. Seven o'clock. Is it good already? Call the meeting in order. Please stand for the pledge and prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the prayer. O oh Lord God, we come before thee in prayer, acknowledging the blessing of government and administration. Thou art a God of order and has blessed us with the establishment of governing officials to provide civil harmony and concord. Be with us in this meeting and give us strength and wisdom to pursue goals which please thee. Grant us the courage to support those things which are right and according to thy ordinances, for we ask in God's name. Amen. And for those who have a prayer, this is the time to recite that. Whether we and or our politicians know it or not, nature is party to all our deals and decisions, and she has more votes, longer memory, and a sterner sense of justice than we do. That's a quote by Wendell Berry. Thank you. Thank you. Roll we'll call, please. Chapa. Here. Malini. Here. Vitamin. Here. Darga. Yes. Celia is absent. Through the agenda, any additions or deletions, we are going to delete number four. We'll have an update from. Uh, Al on that project, but we won't have a resolution. Is, uh, at any time, are we going to address the roof on the old building? The, the ones that the shingle just come off? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got to get some oh, information yeah, together yeah, first. Yeah. yeah. And then probably the next meeting. Next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Or we'll have committees. Send out we'll bids. Yeah. yeah. So, so with that change, with the one deletion of accept, I mean, motion to accept was uh, presented. Support. Motion to support to include the agenda with the exception of number four. Any more discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Conflict with disclosure. Anyone have a conflict with anything on the agenda today? No. Hearing none, we'll go on to the minutes of March 27, 2024. Move to accept as presented. I have a couple of minor uh, okay. corrections, Mr. Darga. Okay, okay uh, second paragraph, Commissioner Darga recited a prayer. We went back from reflection to prayer, so there was no reflection okay. that night. Okay. Okay. Page one. And then yeah. on a uh, the camping policy, which is about three pages in. Last sentence of the policy, this includes for renters of the facilities, not for the facilities. Okay. So with those two changes, same motion accepted to them with support. Okay, we have a motion to support to uh, accept the minutes as corrected. More discussion. If not, any favor, say aye. 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 Claims audit. I will note to the committee that was, um, we did have one, or we had several bills that came in, but one we did add, I, my, I had my office add, one because it had a deadline. If it wasn't renewed 30 days prior to the start of the contract, um, they wouldn't have lien services over next door, and it's very important. So, um, if we are to the lease, forgive me, I had it. That's the end. I was going to say seven, but it's not seven. I think it's six. Election source? No, no. no. It's, uh, um, <laughs> page seven? No, it's not. No, it's not page seven. 
Oops, here it is, page three, four technologies, very bottom one on page three, okay. four technologies. 1870 was the amount. So the, the reports that you had from the other day, you would need to add that 1870. 1870? Yep, it was correct in the um, when I sent it to you, but I forgot to note it in the email. Is it correct on this? No. On uh, the copies that you have correct, yes. No change. But no but the one we have from Plains, it's not. That, that was new. Like I got to do the 1800. Four technology. And again, that's for the Sheriff's Department so they can have their description. Oh, okay. Important. Kind of. Kind of important. So it's correct on this one. Yeah, the copies that Mary Ann Cliff and I have are correct. I mean, I'm sorry. It's 106, 838, 72. So the new 107, 838. Oh, yeah, 107. You're making the amount of 107, 838, 71. Yep, 838, 72. And I'll support that. We have a motion for to pay the plan in the amount of $107,838.72. Any more discussion? Any more questions about the bill? Huh? And we're up to Tallini. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Durga. Yes. Papa. Yes. Motion carried. Citizens appearing before the board. Wayne? I'm happy to let you go first, Mr. Seriously? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, you may recall, three of you may recall, when during COVID, when the board was meeting on, on the Zoom, uh, after the 2020 election, I made a comment, made a funny that uh, I wasn't going to accept the results of the 2020 election. Remember that? Remember, Mr. Darga, you, you made a comment that uh, Mr. Altman was going to get a Christmas card for me that year. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, since Mr. Trump is going on his first criminal trial is set to begin on Monday, I would ask to see a show of hands of who among the board here believes that uh, Joe Biden is our duly elected president of the United States. Okay, let the record show that no one raised their hand. Not surprising. Okay, I'd like to share a couple of observations with you. First of all, if you wanted to be on the planning commission, you could have applied to be on the planning commission. Or if you wanted to be the building <coughs> inspector, zoning administrator, those positions were posted and they were open. Same with the road commission. You have the authority, your power is limited in those positions to appointing people and removing them for cause from those boards of commissions. They are standalone and interfering in their legislative process can be a problem. And, you know, at the last meeting, I believe it was, we're discussing the, the project of the solar project and the road commission, trying to muscle that company around for bond money and all kinds of stuff to maintain that road. The road commission can sue and be sued in their own name. And I would strongly recommend that you let them handle that and stay as far away from that as you can, because the comment was made that the road commission is gonna to have to divert their resources or manpower at the expense of the rest of the county. That's not necessarily true. They have all kinds of options available to them. I mean, they could they could hire independent contractors to, to fix whatever damage is caused out there. The company that's doing the project could work with the road commission and hire independent contractors. There's no reason to divert work away from the rest of the county roads to favor that or to try and muscle a company like that around. That's really, really, uh, in my opinion, exposing the county to unnecessary potential for massive litigation and you really don't need any more. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If, if I may, yeah. um, I just wanted to come and introduce myself to the board tonight. My name is Mike Ekdahl. I was recently appointed as the 89th District Court Judge, which as you know, encompasses uh, Presque Isle County. Uh, I was appointed to fill the vacancy left by Judge Maria Barton, who retired back in October. Uh, I want to apologize for it taking me this long to come and introduce myself. I was supposed to come uh, last month, but 
on the day I was uh, going to come, I had pink eye, and my wife told me like you can't, you can't let these uh, these commissioners see you for the first time looking the way you do. So, um, and then it just so happened that for the uh, five Thursday nights after that, I was enrolled in a campaign finance class, and so this is the first uh, opportunity that I've had to come over here. So I just wanted to uh, show my face and say hi. Uh, I grew up in Sheboygan, about six miles. Uh, west of the county line in the Cordwood Point neighborhood. I went to Sheboygan High School. Uh, my wife, Stacy and I have been married almost 18 years. We have two kids that attend the Sheboygan High School, and uh, I'm really excited about getting the appointment. Um, it's, it's just been a great place to, uh, uh, to be. I come here on Tuesday mornings. I handle the court's criminal docket. Um, you probably already know you've got a Cracker Jack staff up there uh, they have made the transition at least feel to me almost seamless and effortless. So uh, my my hats are off to to the staff. And I also wanted to let you know that I've got an open door policy. Uh, Christy Hardy's has my cell number. If any of you ever want to uh, call or set up a meeting or touch base about anything where you think the court can uh, serve your constituents better, I I've got an uh, open door, open uh, cell phone policy for you. Okay. So um, thank you for letting me speak tonight. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer any that you might have now, or you can uh, call me if you think of any later. Welcome aboard. Thank, thank you, you very much. Welcome. Anyone else? Eric? Just wanted to stop by and thank everybody. So in case you don't know, I'm Eric Nadalski with Huron State Bank. Um, give you a, a real quick up, update. You're, our annual report just came out last week, um, and it was after your last meeting, so I couldn't make it to that one. Came last year, just presented real quick. I'll leave our financials with you. Uh, they are audited financials. The bank ended up uh, with over a million dollars in net income. First time in 43 years that that's happened. Our assets are over 82 million, so our assets are strong. Return on assets was at 1.28. We had a great year. Uh, return on average shareholder equity was 11.02. Last year's dividend that we did, that we declared, declared was a dollar fifty a share. We just declared a dividend um, earlier this month at a dollar seventy per share per shareholder. So um, we ended with the equity position for the bank at ten million three hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars. We bought one point four million dollars in depreciated assets because of our municipal investment. So actually, our equity position is a little bit higher than that, about actually about eleven million dollars. Uh, but I want to thank. Uh, the board and also the county treasurer for their work and efforts with the uh, Michigan Land Bank, which helped our project next door near Kitty Corner. That project is, a, is the first MEDC project in Presque Isle County, so we're proud to be a part of that. We also are, are teaming up with Michigan Land Bank for assistance on some of the work for the roof and the stabilization of that. We received um, tax abatements from the city and we also received tax abatements for the brownfield. If it wasn't for the coordination of all of those efforts together, the bank wouldn't have been in a position to be able to invest six to seven hundred thousand dollars of our cash into it to have that 1.3 million dollar building for the community when that building is complete it'll have two two-bedroom apartments upstairs that we will run out the main floor of that building is going to be our disaster recovery for the bank so in the event anything happens to the building next door or the roof caves in basement floods it burns down we can open up right next door because we don't have branches with that said, we'll have our, our board meetings there, just like you folks do, and it'll be at the, at the building next door. It'll be handicap accessible because our basement isn't. We'll have our annual shareholders meeting there, which is at the end of this month annually. We won't have it there this year. But should the county need that building for anything, we're more than happy to let you use it at your disposal at any time at no cost. The same with the city and the same with any other nonprofits. We're here and we've been here for over 40 years. We want to make sure that our doors are open to you and we want to show our appreciation for all that you've done for us and our support. That's all I got. Well, Thanks. Report. Yes, sir. Uh, did you say the ground floor is going to be your disaster recovery? Okay. Okay. Yep. So when you walk in on, on the main, no, no, there was going to be some detail on that. No retail. Yeah. Nope. So when you come in the front door of that building, the back door is going to be handicap accessible. There's a boardroom that's off on the right. It's about the same size as the boardroom that we have in the basement right now. It'll have a table in it about the same length as this, not quite as wide. I believe it'll see about 12. We have a camera or a TV just like you do for, for uh, Zoom meetings. We've got a smaller uh, office behind that. It's about probably the size from me to um, Amory. So there's another office in there. The general area is probably about the size of this, this boardroom that you have. 
So that'll all be there. There's bathrooms, there's a little kitchen out there too. So if the uh, you know if the court needs it for jury selection, that's that's fine. That's what it's for. If you folks need it because you double booked this room and you need to meet or somebody else needs to meet, uh, all you do is get a hold of us at the bank and we're more than happy to open up for you anytime. And again, we've got no cost to the city or the county for that exact reason for the school system. Uh, we might be needing that because this is going to be work done this under summer. construction. So, yeah. yep. so that's a absolutely fine. That's Appreciate what, it, yeah. what what street is it on? Is it second? Okay. It is I mean okay. the mailing address okay. actually is on second, but the front door is off of uh Michigan. Off of Michigan. Oh it is okay. Yeah. Face it facing uh yeah. the laundromat. Yep. But our tax bill says 192 in our second. Yeah. So it's odd. Okay. But and that building was built in 1880, 1885. Yeah, the Malloy's only and uh yeah so it's been it's been a fun project but it is uh it's been expensive. It's been a learning process, but it's got fire suppression upstairs, fire suppression downstairs, handicap accessible, all meeting up to code. Um, is the basement know, is usable? Or is basement's going to be our storage as well. Oh, okay. But it's only half basement on the back right. side. Oh, right. I dug that out. Yep. Yeah, dug that out. So it's, a, it's a nice project. And again, it couldn't have been, it, it wouldn't have came to fruition if it wasn't for the MEDC, the Michigan Land Bank, the city, and the Brownfield. Because if it was, if we didn't have any of the, that help, we would have bulldozed it. Well, it's kind of, kind of ironic. I was yeah, born and raised for six years morning. upstairs towards Michigan. Oh, uh, really? Apartment for six years. We lived there. There you go. So you move yep. back. Move back. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to get a plaque on it. It's always good to get good news, and yep. especially about the bank and uh, yep. also your project. So thank you very much. <laughs> yes, the hours. Yeah, we thank yeah, you right, for, your, yeah. for your deposits, for your, for your business on the delinquent bond. Right. We got that. Well, um, thank so, you yeah, for being competitive. If transition when Bridget leaves, we're more than happy to answer any questions that we can. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, okay. So since this will be my last official meeting, <laughs> I probably will not stay for um, government official comment. Um, I'm going to stay here through the, the amendment of the bylaws for the Hensville County Land Bank. But I just wanted to share publicly that I have enjoyed very much serving uh, the people of Presque County. Uh, I've enjoyed working with the board um, in its several transitions, as well as all of the departments here within the county um, for the last 11 and a half years. I look forward to my um, new position, but I am very confident that um, Valerie Peacock, who was appointed earlier today, will provide the county um, the stability it needs moving forward, uh, being that we're heading into budgets um, and um, she's very familiar with the office, all of the governmental accounting, and I think that that transition um, through the end of the year should be pretty seamless. So <coughs> just want to thank all of you. And we thank you for your time here to you. Too. Yeah, we will be with you. We we be very, be very missed, deeply missed. <laughs> it's time. Turn it around. Turn it off. Huh? Yeah, she got. He got it right. <laughs> this time, I'd like to present the certificate of appreciation to you. Oh, well, thank congratulations. You Thank you very much. Thank you, Bridget. Good luck going forward now. Thank you. Yes, we're uh, equalization report, Dave. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to present the 2024 equalization report. The first is with NCL 209.5 and 211.34. Which requires the board of commission to be the equal equalization. This report includes the 2024 assessed values and state equalized values for each township and city in the county. The state to the total state equalized and assessed values for real and personal property is one billion two hundred and seventy million seven hundred and five thousand nine hundred and eighty-one. That's up sixteen point nine one percent from last year. The NCB for real property is one billion two hundred and fourteen million two hundred and sixty-five thousand one hundred and thirty-one, up sixteen point seven nine percent. And the personal property is at fifty-six million four hundred and forty thousand eight hundred and fifty. That's up eighteen point nine five eight percent. And this is mainly due for the increases in the utilities. Uh, the AG is at ninety-nine million nine hundred and sixty-six thousand, up six point four three. Commercial is at forty million five hundred and seventy-nine thousand. 
industrial was at 27 million, 725,000 up 6.13. And residential is at 1 billion, 45 million, 993,431 up 18.30. Uh, there was no factor to any of the townships or cities this year. And we have one IFP person in the city of Rochester City at 279,600. And last year, the increase was at 12.81%. It was 7.72 and 21, it was 5.53. So it's been going back and forth for each year. Then what's the increase in taxable value? The increase in taxable value, uh, the estimated taxable value is 892,500. Percentage, please. The percent. The percent would be 8.35%. 8 8.35. And this year's uh, totals include the veterans exemptions, which used to be uh, taken off the roll completely. This year, they're going to be on the roll, but there will be no tax bills printed. So that's about $4.5 million in taxable that they have in veterans exemption in the company. As I recall, it was also 8 point something or other taxable increase last year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, last year, the tax bill was about 6.5%. 6 6.5%. 6 6 okay. And this year, with the veterans exemptions being included, I subtracted that out the last three ones. So it's about 7.8% actual. Instead of 8. Instead yeah. of the 8.35, that's yeah. actually shown because of the veterans exemptions being included. And what brings it down now? Well, that veterans veterans. Exemptions. It's included in the total. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's We've had more and more veterans take advantage of that. Yeah, I, I think that's actually a good thing. It's four and a half million dollars. Yeah. 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 And I, I think that's partly because we have a, a new veterans yeah. administrator yeah. here and he's getting the word out. Right. right. Yeah. 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 That taxable is the of all the property yes. increased to eight point three. How how can that be with the proposal A? It's supposed to be capped at five percent. Is five percent, but then if it sells, it comes on cap. Oh, so they have to yeah, right. and then any new construction. So you got the on cap. Yeah, yeah, any new construction right. that they put out there, it's okay. right, it's added to it too. So yeah, I see. And we do have a heavy rollback this year for the millage. It's at point nine nine four nine, which will bring our our county millage down to five point six eight five eight. And that's due to the higher tax rate increase. And we didn't have a heavy rollback last year. No, there's no heavy rollback. Mm -hmm. Did you get that 575, right? Yeah, yeah. So that'll be on, on the summer tax. The summer tax, yeah, yeah. yeah. The veterans, the village, and the county village. Obviously, you have to charge Any other okay. questions or? Motion received and filed. Oh. I, I was aired when I said that. This is the one that we have to approve, uh, authorize the chair and myself. Oh, okay. 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 I'll make a motion to have the chairman sign the approval. Court. We have a motion to support to uh, <clears throat> the chair uh, sign the uh, chair any more discussion? Thanks, David. Any more discussion? This is amazing. Uh, um, yeah, we do a roll call. Yeah, yeah the checks. But here's a, that's a, a lot of second home construction out there, big time. That's really interesting. Wow. Case Township, too. That's the legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. No, okay. yes. Wait, there was no more questions before I started. <laughs> no, no. Call. We were just amazed. It's good to see um, <clears throat> people starting to appreciate our county. Anyway, uh, I'm Rolla B. Heidemann. Yes. Darga? Yes. Chapa? Yes. Kalini? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution Thank for you. the uh, SRO ballot language. That's the uh, resource yeah. officer. School resource, School resource officer. Counting yeah. by. Yeah. yeah. So, also, um, because I had to wait to get the figure from the city on the estimation of the DDA um, captured. <laughs> 
And as Dave has been schooling me and educating me on how it's calculated, it's the city has to give this that number basically. We, and, it, and again, these figures are just for the language. It doesn't mean that's because they also have to, again, we have the best of exemption, so it may be less than, but that number in the bottom of the resolution that have a line through it for yep. you, I got today, is 1,463.71. And that would be as part of the language that would be a benefit. So at the bottom, um, it says no under, under the language part. Oh, right now yours says five. Yeah, five fifty nine. Yep. Sorry, yep. official resolution. I had a blank line there. So it's what? So it's one four six three point seven one. And it's right here. The very last line. Very last line. Yep. It says five. And by comparison, um, last year's capture was this shy of a thousand dollars. So you know, again. It's not that this was 500 and now it's 1400. It's that was four years ago. Oh, so just to that explanation. Yeah. yeah. And just to be clear, then the number that I had in there, again, is an estimation based on without the veterans exemptions was 294. 54. Correct. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody has the exact same. That's why, same that's, why I'm, that's why I'm, yeah. So you can know, yep. see if you've got the same motion to approve that. Okay. Four. To adopt the resolution. Adopt the resolution. And uh, 294, 546, 64 is the accurate number. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. what I had before. What's the numbers at the end? 16 and the number of the resolution. Mm -hmm. No, is this, uh, no, this is four. resolution number 14. It's 15. 15. 15. And it's for a period of four years. Correct. Yep. And is that total? That's for each year. That's each year. That's each year. That's each year. So, and by way of information, we do have three school resource officers. Um, we do split it one third to the city. They provide one for the school here. Um, even though it's a county millage and the county could employ all three officers, it's an agreement that's been going on since a long time. It's worked well, I think, for everybody, for, especially for the departments. Good communication. So and I think Deputy Schmoke is in some you you go on away, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So thanks for being here, Deputy. Thank you. Yeah. Any more discussion on the resolution? No, a motion to adopt it. Yes, we had a motion and some more. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, that's why for the roll call. Makes it more Did you call me? No. no, I'm just making sure there's no discussion before I start. I calling. just didn't know that it was okay. Up. Sure. Darga? Yes. Chapa? Yes. Fellini? Yes. 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 Use of the courthouse run by the Northern Successful Committee. Um, yes, and there was some concerns from the uh, maintenance department, some additional information. And I got the email with the changes and stuff, so that all yep. was good. So yeah. I had wanted to reach out to them and make sure they were okay with it. And it took a little long to get to it, but they did. Um, the extra things was that no stick. vendors would be parked in the right. in the new garden area like they did in the past. Um, they must provide a dumpster with lid for the vendors to use daily over on this side and request to coordinate and pay accordingly to the city DPW um, to clean the parking lot with their sweeper prior to the courthouse opening for business. Does, does it say anything about trash on the lot? No. They're, well, the they're... dumpster, I think, will help. That was the problem last year. There was no dumpster for them to take the, the garbage. The seagulls got into the trash bags the and spread the trash all over the street. No. So I think they're going to have it towards the parking lot. Yeah, we didn't get into details right. there, but they have agreed before yes. we approve it. So that's that's a good thing. So yeah, it's a situation. Motion. So I'll make the motion that we'll let the festival committee use the lawn with the new changes of the support. So the motion support to uh, okay. not the festival committee to use the courthouse lawn. Any more discussion? I don't know if there was lawn damage last year. No, no. I don't think there was a lawn damage. No. It's just that there's a lot of garbage. Floor. We had talked about the the fact that there is damage to the lawn yeah. because of all the Tire walking around right. and stuff like that. So it does take a little extra fertilizer for our 
you know, for but us. That's kind bring... of unavoidable under the yeah, right. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. Just and I, and I for one, am before. happy that it's on the lawn. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a nice lawn. It's town. probably a lot worse. Love it. It's yeah. raining. Right. Perfect place for it. Right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Both. Motion carried. Number four is. Experience. Expunge. Number five, tree removal approval for the 40 mile point light of. So, um, yeah, a couple of blew down too in that one storm. Trying to get to my notes here. I think so, seven trees are taken all together. Yeah, maintenance did get, um, he had reached up to several, got two, um, as I had provided in your packet Renegade Enterprise and Hunter Construction. Um, Renegade in our yard. Yeah. yeah, Justin and and Justin, uh, they have Renegade has done uh, service for us at the Akaka Door Center before. Right. For what were the bids? So Renegade was thirty five hundred, and Bruni, I'm sorry, Hunter Construction was five thousand. Make a motion to uh, approve the project for Renegade. Support. We have a motion to support to approve the <clears throat> bid by Renegade in the amount of thirty five hundred dollars to move the trees at Forty Mile Point Lighthouse. Any more discussion? Not all in favor. No, no, that's not yet. Gotta find where my sheet mentioned. Okay. We are at Chapa. Yes. Fellini. Yes. Heidemann. Yes. Sarga. Yes. Motion carried. This is valve repair and the boiler lines for the courthouse. So if you weren't aware, we have I I know it was reported on that one time we had a, a nasty little leak about a month ago now. Um, some of the valves are, as they were working to find out where there was an issue found out they were leaking. So um, because it was somewhat of an emergency at the time, um, Mike did have Renix come over and take a look and, and got to the root cause of it. Again, as you have um, received in your packets, the information of what was going on we want to approve it now, but we don't know when it'll be done. We're trying to find that time because the water has to be shut off to drain the water. It's got to stop, though. So yeah. Yeah, yeah leak, it's, it's not yeah. leaking anymore. Leaky valve, water valves. There's multiple valves that just... From the boilers. Move. They can't even move them. Yeah, so they need they to drain the lines to do that, supply. which would be no heat. So we have to find that timeline of when we don't need the heat. Um, Yesterday would have been fine. Today wasn't have been, no. you know. So that, that is a problem. Yeah, it's a big problem. We have no. So much, how much is right that now. bid? So the bid right now is thirty thirty nine three thousand nine fifty. Thirty nine fifty. Even. That's what it says. Just one from Renix. Yeah, it, like I said, they. Well, yeah, yeah, they had an emergency. They yeah. know they are right. the ones that went through everything to find the. I'll make a motion that we give the bid to Rennick for $3,950 for repair the valves from the boiler lines in the courthouse here. When the heat's not needed. When the heat's not needed. Well, like I said, that Michael coordinator. Support. Okay. Yeah, we're a motion support to the I got to replace them all in my house. So the the uh, quote of $3,950 by Rennick Brothers to repair the valves. How many, you know, how many? Uh, I, I think there's seven. seven. I think there's seven. Sure. You want to know why that happens? Is because they never get used. Well, yeah. Nobody ever closes right. and opens right. them valves. That's the thing to do is you to go every so Once often. Once a year. Open and close. You got to do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Any more discussion? If not, I guess we need a roll call. Yep. Red Tulane. Yes. Vitamin. Yes. Sorry, yes. Chocolate. Yes. Motion carry. Land Bank, Amended Bylaws and Board Appointment. Bridget? Hello. Hi. Um, so before I departed, I wanted to make sure that I reviewed the intergovernmental agreement with the state, as well as our bylaws that were established for the Land Bank. And I wanted to be able to make some amendments that mirrored our intergovernmental agreement. Uh, one of the most obvious ones, when I looked at it, when this was initially drafted, um, in 2016, on um, page one, they named me by, by name instead of just leaving it the county treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to amend that to just leave it as the county treasurer. So anybody that's in that position um, is also a chair of the land bank. Right. Um, page six. Um, 
I had made uh, some changes with the recent litigation that has happened uh, the last roughly five years uh, regarding the property tax foreclosure, um, general property tax act and, and different challenges they're still facing. Um, I want to be able to include any amendments um, for acquisition of property um, from the county to also comply with uh, amendments of the General Property Tax Act and most recent um, court decisions mm -hmm. to make sure that was in there. That was placed on uh, Section B and then Section 2.3, um, I added the General Property Tax Act. Mm -hmm. Page seven. Um, at the time this was established, um, I did it just so we had the infrastructure in place. There was always talk about, you know, um, going and creating a legislative committee to, to lobby for dollars. Um, and that didn't happen to our many years later. Um, I was part of the committee that helped lobby for the rural areas. And, um, and so we didn't meet regularly and we didn't have any specific language about grants. Um, so I added uh, for grants specific to this authority, the board authorizes the engagement and designates its Presque Hill County Treasurer slash Chair of the Land Bank Board or other designee of the board's choosing to sign all documents relating to the grant, grant program application, execution, and to retain a percentage of the admin funds for work being done in accordance with the grant specific to the Now, board. that's the county board you're talking about, right? Not, yes. not the no, land no. bank board. It's just the land well, bank. Well, this, this would be the county um, land bank. Okay. Yes. Right. But the way the intergovernmental agreement works is that there's dual, dual authorization. Well, so okay, that's why right. the, okay. the amendments right. are coming here, as well as the chair... Uh, the board appointments. Okay. This is just to apply for the grant. Yes. Yeah. And there was already a resolution that was passed by the board to allow me to go after blight um, grant okay. funds through the state land bank for rounds two and three. Um, this just adds this to the, the bylaws. Makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if I have any other. The rest was pretty standard. Well, I the didn't see. The, uh, on page seven, the uh, Terms of office, you are going to go from two years to oh, four years. Yes. So because of the change in the yeah. which section there? Which section? Seven. Three, 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 three point three. Three point three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have to change it to four years. Well, no, it's going to be alternating three year terms. And I can explain a little more too. Um, so there's four at, at large um, people uh, that right. have been on the board. Um, it is the recommendation of the land bank to reappoint those tonight so that we can continue on because um, it hasn't been done in a bit. In the first round, it was that way because this was being established and we needed that alternating. But if we do it now, we're going to have a rest in the board to state in the motion that their terms will expire on this date or this date. Well, the nomination of our, our job. Similar to other EDC boards. It's 7.7, 7, right? Oh, I'm looking for the names. Oh, no, we just yeah. we just got done doing this literally 5 o'clock, I think it was. Um, that I thought was, I seen them in. That wasn't sent to you before. I didn't send anything. No, I I sent oh, so am I hearing that 3.3 stays as it's shown here? No, it no. will say to be appointed All to you. Three year terms alternating, alternating. Three two years. and you know, two will expire in this. But when we appoint this first time, we'll get them in line. All right, not to be too stupid, could you please say the sentence in English that okay. you're substituting? Three year terms, you said. Mm -hmm. She'll be appointed to two staggering three year terms. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Large mm -hmm. appointed to. And there, Again, there could you repeat the sentence with the correct thing in of it? Of the members at large, two shall be appointed for two or four, four shall be appointed. Thank you. With that staggered two. Oh, Jesus, I can't even speak now. <laughs> Again, I'd like to hear the sentence. Hold on. Let me write it out and I will get it for yes. you. Yes. And then, and then they were to start in the beginning of the calendar year. Well, that was also noted. They would expect, yeah, expire, so to get, it, it, expire, right. to get it in line right. for expiration at right. four right. members. Yeah, so the, there's a seven-member board. Um, three are constant. Um, 
according to the bylaws, which would be uh, whoever's chair of the board of commissioners, the sure. county clerk and the county treasurer. And then there's four at-large positions. The at-large positions of one did say. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what would that be? One, one of them, a three-year term? She's two, working two it out term. right now. We don't have it yet. Okay. Of the members at large, of the four members at large, Two will expire on 123126, and two will expire yeah. on 123127, then continuing alternating three year terms. Two at what? 123126. Two, 123127. And then continuing as alternating three year terms. Yeah. And then the last clause of the sentence remains the same with subsequent appointments based on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So you can make a motion. Make a motion for the amendment to the land bank bylaw. Board. We have motions for to approve the. <laughs> With the change bylaw the changes to the land bank county mm -hmm. land bank as presented then more discussion uh, we'll get this all wrong. Yep. Wait a minute. yes yes yeah. 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 yes motion carried um, now we need to appoint two people so of the four um Carl, who is a past chair, had been Carl, had, Altman. Carl Altman had been appointed as an alternate, which so he was familiar with it. Um, Jim Zakchesky was another person. Um, and it's the recommendation that they be appointed to the first expiring terms of 1231-26. And then the alternating was Norm Quain, a surveyor, also mm -hmm. um, familiar with the information. And Bridget has uh, agreed to step in to fill the gap, which will obviously greatly help um, Val in the future. With Norm's got time to do it. Yeah. We don't need that. Um, and they would have the expiring 2027 We need two. Yeah. So we so we do two. We we do nominations. You could nominate really anybody, but again, these individuals have been working with it, are familiar with it. Um, because it is a very okay, I'll, I'll, I'll nominate yeah. Carl Altman. You gotta do them individually. Okay. And, and I'll then, nominate uh are you gonna do it all at once? I'm Jim's gonna do the twenty twenty six. I'll Charles nominate Mercy. Jim's yeah. for me. Also for the twelve twenty one twelve thirty one twenty six. Yeah. And you speak spoken with these folks and they're willing. Yes, they were okay. here for the meeting the other day and did agree. So you're gonna vote on the nomination. Correct. So we have First. to call for any further. Any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further Make nominations? Motion we close nominations. Cashing Amos Belt for Mr. Altman and Mr. Zakshevsky. Support. <laughs> for motion to support the pass unanimous ballot for Jim Zakshevsky and Carl Altman for the uh, terms ending 12 21 30, 26. 12, 12 31. Yep. 12 31 26, yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we got to nominate. I nominate Norm Queen. Okay, and I'll nominate uh, Bridget Lillow. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Make a motion to cast uh, close nominations, cast unanimous ballot for Bridget Lillow and Norm Queen. Support. We have a motion to support to uh, cast a unanimous ballot for Bridget. And those terms yeah, ending in 123127. Great. So the term ending 123127. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Thanks for continuing on with that. It's important. Yeah. yeah. Sure is. Yeah. I guess.
at this point, maybe we should address the uh, subject. I will say the one. The projects we applied for, can we address those at this point? Um, well, they, I haven't gotten uh, confirmation that all four were um, approved. Approved. Oh, um, so, um, okay. So, in fact, that, that um, Val is signed up for a meeting uh, with the state land bank tomorrow. Oh, so really? Okay. We so, made that transition. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff with all the submissions, um, grant agreements uh, regarding. The round two funding in round three is federal, so there's a separate no. um, portal to to submit quarterly reports that way. Um, and then with me being on the board, I can help. Well, okay, good. Good. Thank you. Okay, I guess we're at number eight, building inspector hire. Yeah, Marianne and I uh, met Tuesday with personnel and met with a gentleman. His name is Mike uh, Smiley, uh, for an applicant for our building inspector's position. Uh, he has, we called him and he has accepted to take the job on. Uh, he is going to uh, get his name in. He's going to get ready to take the test. Now you have to take a test, uh, uh, study for a test, take the test to be a state inspector. Look, let me just uh, expand on that, Mike. This testing requirement, as opposed to just needing the timing, right. happened last fall. Oh, yeah, so it's last time August. To do. Yes. So that this he has the, the number of years experience is six. This guy has thirty. Yeah. He's, he's a plumber. Yes. He's yes. A plumber. Yes. Yeah, building building something. Yeah. Yes. He has he has a building license. Plumbing, oh, plumbing yes, right. license. I know, I know Smiley. Does he, does he live here in Case Town? No, he lives in by Freeland. But he lives but he's in got, he's buildings. got He's got some place. It's in Case Town. Yes. Correct. He's building, yes. He's got property in the township and he's building a home there. It's not right by the old farm. So that must be his, uh, Scott's brother. Scott's brother. brother. Yes, brother. Brother. And then he got brother John, too. Uh, so. We're just trying to get acquainted with the new regs. Uh, he, if you register within 30, 30 days. days of your hire, you're good to go, and you can then take the exam. And they give them in remote locations, Gaylord being probably the closest. And you find out the results the day you take it, and you're immediately certified. So we feel confident he'll be able to do that. Yes. So he's and, and in the like, meantime, can he approve? No. no, that's why we've been talking with Sheboygan County and Montmorency County. They're going to help us fill in with it. Both of those didn't are Mike say to do that. Help fill in? Uh, he didn't care to. He, he was at the meeting also. He didn't. Right. Yeah, he he did. He didn't really care to. So uh, I just thought he said. I, I reached out and I talked to Matt Doug, oh, God, Cronk. Cronk from Sheboygan. He is the building official in Sheboygan County, and he's got three building inspectors that work under him. And then I called uh, Tony L uh, Dawson in Montmorency, but he referred me to uh, Joe Stone, and he's the building official building inspector from Oscoda, which does Montmorency County also. So and they're both we, willing we to help. They're both, we have... A lot of backup yes. in yeah. adjacent counties. It will be a very two. short time yes. for the inspector portion. However, we need a building official. You cannot sit for the official exam, which is not required as of last fall, until you have worked two years Correct. as a building registered inspector. inspector. So we will need the backup from these counties and we're working on an agreement yes. for coverage as an official. The official duties are somewhat light. Most of the burden is on the, the inspector, inspector. Yes. for permit approval and inspection. Uh, but we must, according to state law, have an official on tap. And we plan to do that by working right. with our adjacent counties. Right. And we're gonna we're gonna have a meeting with both inspectors sometime next week, I hope for. Soon as, as soon as we can, yeah, 
And the, what I would say about this gentleman is he's he has long-term interest in our county. He's currently official resident of Freeland, yes. but he has property here. He's in the middle of building a home on it. He's He applied last year, but could not come to the interview. The gentleman yes. is very much a people person who's familiar with- It's a very good interview, yes. Ex, unbelievably good interview. Right. So right. we right. have right. hopes right. for this working out in the long run. Right. And, he, got, and he's and he's gung ho. I'm on Scott being in seven different yeah. places. And I would say yes. this about the pay. Of course he wanted more money. But we had to point out that, you know, right now today walking in, it's on the bed. You don't have the official credentials. Right. Right. So part of the deal was a structure of coming in and then having a bump up when he gets this exam done and another bump and up. Passes it. Pardon? So when he passes the exam. Oh, yes, and yeah. passes it. Bump up to what salary, though? The bump up was uh, to 20, 24, 22 50 an hour. That was the entry level. Yes. And then we oh, bump yeah. up that, to 24. Yeah, 50,000. Well, I thought it was a salary. Wasn't well, it's it's gonna, it's, no, it's an it, hourly. It, the start, starting pay will be 22 50 And then... After he passes his exam, twenty four. Or, then he goes to well, it's a couple of dollars short of fifty thousand dollars. Twenty four even. Well, we'll just go to. I think we, we're we're that talking that about the fifty thousand dollars because it's for forty nine thousand eight hundred and some dollars at 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 the rate that we. I know the Smileys. <laughs> Their father started that contract in business and really, mm -hmm. yeah, all do really That's good correct. work. And then two years, assuming that he. Exams again for the official. Then we, we'll then have we check in bump. another bump up, but then we have a meeting. Yeah. That's so our recommendation from the uh, personnel I committee think, is to uh, hire. You know this. Guy our building there. inspector. I mean, Mike Smiley as our new building inspector. I would make that motion. I, I yeah. did make that motion. Just need a support. Okay. Here, so uh -huh. I'm talking about. It. Support. I'll support it. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion, and do we need to put the. So, I would say starting. So. Starting style here at twenty two fifty. He must be retired. He's go, he's getting ready to. He's, he's not not yet. We have a motion to support then to hire Michael Smiley as our new building inspector at the rate of twenty two fifty an hour to start. Uh, when would he be starting? As soon as possible, yep. with some flexibility due to yep. his other projects. Which means. Well, <laughs> Monday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, okay. yeah, we have to get the paperwork and we do all get that. We got to get paperwork and everything right. done. And as soon as he gets the he call. Must be, he must be staying at a camp there. They got a camp. They have a cabin as well as the property yeah, that we're building. Stay. So, yes, he has a lodging. It's right on range. So he didn't, he didn't, didn't do the interview last year because he's in the middle of patching a main up in Saginaw County. Yeah. yeah they're pat, tapping a live main. They, they ran into some problems, so he couldn't make it. Literally, he was in the trenches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, sounds good. So, any more discussion? If not, I guess we need a roll call for this one. Sergeant? Yes. Papa? Yes. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. For your well, that, that was going to be good. I didn't think that was going to happen. For that. I, mean, I thought we were going to. I didn't think that, that was going to happen. Thank you. Thanks again, again Bridget. Bridget. Come and visit us sometime. <laughs> Many reports. Well, and finance. Uh, we talked about everything here. We went over the uh, the claims, and and then we talked about uh, getting a hold of the two inspectors and stuff to help us uh, with our building inspector problem. And I don't think we had anything else. There was nobody. Here. Really with their hand out. Yeah, and then our personnel that we had Tuesday we just got done. We had that interview, and we're going to have some meetings scheduled. I think the first one is on May third. The personnel. So that's all I have. Is we, we did everything through our agenda today. So anybody else? Road commission. Yeah, that's a special appointment. Yeah, that's okay. But we're, nobody else has any committee, so special. Yeah, uh, the road commission. Uh, the road commission. 
DTE accepted their agreement, the uh, road use agreement. The only thing they want, they said that $600,000 has to be in a non-interest account. I don't know where they came up with that. So they're talking to the McCran lawyer. They don't understand why they can't put it in their account. And they table making a new account, a non-interest account at here on national. Just to check yeah, yesterday. Came well, in yesterday. Oh, it came in? He told them that? Well, they it must be just yesterday holding yesterday. it then. Or the day before. They must <laughs> be holding it then because... <laughs> uh, uh, they table that anyways at that meeting so we didn't go forward with it. <laughs> DOT's got seven hundred thousand dollars in general maintenance fund to use on state trunk lines this year and allotted for our road commission. And it's not gonna affect It'll be busy. the maintenance of our road. So they can they got plenty enough help to work to, to work the projects in. Uh, bridge work applications have been submitted for 2027 works. File van replacement was $1.368 million. They're going to start work on 638, then move to Highland Pines. Yeah. Uh, call the pricing came in. They were all pretty close on their call list for the year. They went with Regis, St. Regis, $18,469. Kevin Bredo has been working on and off through college and it's changed his interests and they're going to hire him part time and hopefully move him to the full time position. And then we had a little discussion on mileage based user fees that the states. Yeah, I'm trying to do in the little gas tax, but we didn't have enough information on it to talk about it. So that was it for the road commission of that meeting. Yeah. Minutes. I uh, saw that they were doing the spring cleanup on the Huron Sunrise Trail. I think MDOT helps out with that once and then it MDOT. goes to the city. Okay. So not the county road commission. I, I think it's the region. I don't, I don't think the county does that. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Anyway, it's done and it looks good, you know, because there's quite oh, a lot of gravel. That they goes. voted at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. They get their trucks from Traverse. Yeah, they got their trucks. They're really happy with yeah. them. Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be pretty nice. I was going to take They are nice trucks. Day. It's yeah, it's a pretty good deal to get a foot in with them guys. Thirty, 30 grand. They roll through those uh, yeah. quite regularly that over there. Amazing. Yep. Mm -hmm. The um, semi is a really nice truck. Too. I didn't see that one. I, I was going to go see him today. Maybe I'll take a Dave drove spin there tomorrow. He said it's nice. There any, uh, the bridge on uh, out in Craco. Oh, the one off of 638 there that way or, 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 or 65 of me? 23. Uh, can't think of the name of the road. Long Lake. Uh, no, no, that was supposed to be uh, a the couple list. years ago. Uh, pardon? It's supposed to be on the list. Yeah, it was actually on the list to do. So, that, so was the only one is this file. So was the bridge. Well, on so was the bridge on sixty eight. That was supposed to be done. Well, on that now, one too. I heard that was put off a couple of years. Ago. Well, it's put off to like twenty twenty nine now. The one right on sixty eight. Yeah, the Rain, little Rain, Rain, This side Rain, on the way. Rain, oh, this Rain, side. Oh, okay. Yeah. When we were right, talking right. around the go yeah. around using yeah. a 638 for a detour. Okay. Yeah, they put stuff on and then it just gets shoved. I don't know how the well, state does that. Like bridges collapsing. Well, the, most <laughs> of the bridges are pretty pretty rough pretty, shape. Pretty rough state. Gate. Yep. In, In the, the whole state. state. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's good. Um, 
just to mention that the planning commission normally meets every couple months, but they had moved their May typical May meeting to June so they could have the hearing on the county master plan. And now they found out they've got to have a May meeting anyway because they have a special land use coming in. So there will be a May and a June meeting. And uh, there's a NEMCOG meeting later this month, but I don't have the report yet. So, so they're having one in June, you said? Yep. May they and June. In, uh, May will consider the special land use. And I haven't seen it yet because the agenda hasn't come out. But yeah, the no. ones in June will be for the master plan. Who's asking for a special use for You don't know yet. I don't know. I just uh, heard it from the office staff that they're so we'll have two months of consecutive meetings. That's all I have. Okay. I got a question for you though. When when a permittee asks for a did they ask for their permits and scheduling with your regular meetings, or do you ever have when you have to have a special if, meeting? If they that, have to have they, a special meeting, they have to pay. They pay for it. Because a special land use requires public notice. So really? there's a ad in the paper and all that jazz. Plus plus extra uh, per diems. For the, yeah. and it's I hard. haven't had a chance to read the ordinance, so I didn't know. I'm almost positive that you would be charging them for any special. Oh, yeah, they charge them. But nice. May is the regular meeting, so they won't be able to charge for yeah, that. Yeah, I have seen. And uh, then well, have the June like, meeting be a special meeting, but then that's the county's own. Right, all right. <laughs> so. Their own town? Yeah. That's so it's just an emergency or something. <laughs> Yeah, I attended the NEMSCA board meeting on Friday. And um, one of the things we're looking at is a four day work week. They, um, people get paid 40 hours, but they get an hour lunch, which is paid. So actually, they work 35 hours. And <clears throat> if they went to a four day week, they would be looking at 36 hours. So, um, and they're, they're doing a pilot with about 10 staff right now. So that's working out for them. So that, right. um, our bylaws currently say we have to have 10 meetings a year, and they're looking at cutting a couple in um, April and October. Um, in the, in the past, we didn't have an executive committee that was empowered to make decisions. We do now, so I think we can get away with a couple less meetings, which I'll certainly vote for. Um, we'd save about 5000 in venue, mileage, and meal costs, because we'll do five more for our meetings. Um, they are... <clears throat> Winding down their uh, food distribution uh, operation. Uh, the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan is interested in their equipment, so they're hoping they can sell all of that to them. Uh, they aren't going to be with a rental for the building, and they aren't going to take over take over the building. I guess they'll probably be running things out of Gaylord actually. They have been, they've been kind of piggybacking on our building. So, could be no interruption, I guess, basically. Um, they were, <clears throat> our um, pace thing is uh, going ahead. Uh, we've uh, we passed a motion to. Uh, Guarantee a line of credit of up to two and a half million dollars. It figured it would be about five million dollars to uh, get this thing off the ground, and so we're kicking in half of it. We had, we do have a half interest in it um, in the project. So uh, did they confirm the location? A, yeah, it's going to be the Peebles. Well, or, people, yeah, right there on uh, South Twenty Three uh, by by Joanne uh, Fabrics. Yeah, by the way, Victory Street. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they do have a manager hired. Um, That's the big lots building. People's next by the big big lots. Right yes, by big lots. Yeah, I think it's right next door. Yeah, it's an end of that. 
think the Secretary of State back in there someplace. It's in the yeah, but they're in the building. building, yeah. Mm -hmm. Off into the back a little bit. Right. Um, there was an article in the Alpena News about uh, poverty and or childhood poverty rates in Michigan, a study by the University of Michigan revealed that the rates are high, <clears throat> excuse me, highest in Northeast Michigan. The overall state rate of child, child children living in poverty is 18%. The Northeast counties, the rate is 24%. Um, two counties have rates higher than the regional rate, Alcona at 26 and Mount Renzi at 28 and a half. Um, no employment. Pardon? Um, and then here's a uh, example of some of the work they do in the weatherization. It's, uh, oh, on your house or insulation and stuff. Yeah, like that. and that's a pretty good graphic, I think. Um, the other thing is um, consumers energy. Uh, is donating an electric van and two charging stations. And right now it'll be a uh, station in West Branch and College, and that's where they're going to have their charging. Donating it to Yes. Yeah. I guess it's a Ford. That's all I have. Question. What was the reasoning on the 36 hour work week budget? Cuts or... Well, no, I, I think a lot of it is retaining staff. You know, can't find anybody. Pardon? Big turnover. Well, they do have a fairly high rate of turnover. Their pay isn't that great. Okay. Um, their teachers, their starting teachers are comparable to public school teachers, but they don't have the staff. So they mm -hmm. do some that for a couple of years. I like the health department. He's not the greatest, but that's all I have. Commissioner, comment? Simply um, that I won't be here the next meeting. I'll be on uh, the state for family vacation. Okay. Well, enjoy. Got you covered. Okay, okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of because you there may be some negotiations going on, and uh, Mr. Saley is the back way, so if I'm not offended if he sits in. Um, no, I'm all set. Thank you. Um, government officials, you want to start? Or, okay, Vicki. Just reporting, we had a fair amount of uh, documents coming through from the treasurer's office in the last week. We did about 400 documents, uh, 300 and some of those were forfeiture documents, and then followed up with the certificate of redemptions for those that redeemed their property. Um, I did talk to Anne Marie, I do have the dates for the scanning project. I was advised not to give that information during a recorded public meeting for security reasons, but um, I have coordinated with her on the dates so that the room is available for them to do the project and also with uh, Mike from maintenance, give him a heads up um, that they will be requiring some sort of hour at the hotel in the past. And as I mentioned, they do have references available. If anybody is interested in that information, they're a very reputable company. I don't. Um, it went pretty smoothly last time. Yes, I, I don't have any concerns. They, they go all over the nation doing this. And um, certainly that information is available if anybody is going to have it. That will be happening next month. And um, happy to see that going forward. Have any other uh, anything else to report this time? Anybody have any questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Al? Yes, sir. A couple items. Try to keep a little brief. Uh, one, activating the airport. 
for this time of year, once again, don't know why it's actually higher than it has been in all the previous seasons. And in light of the economy and what we read, I have an explanation, but it is up and I'm fairly happy with that. Hopefully it'll continue to rise. Fuel, fuel sales up, Al? Fuel sales are about on a par, maybe slightly up from previous seasons at this time, but the activity people using the airport just coming in doing takeoffs and landings. Coming up and visiting, exploring. Yeah, visiting. I see. I've seen that little white and red one here quite a bit. Yeah, he, he ties down. Yeah, we like I said, it's good. You know, happy. Don't lie. Don't yep. care. Glad to see him come. Yep. Well, we've had a number of people that have been second time visitors to Westfield County have come, grabbed a food car, gone out to dinner, or come back to explore some more, which makes me feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a plus. Uh, talk to Mike. I think we talked to you guys about having to do some repairs on its center field wind uh, sock. Yeah. Uh, looked around. Unfortunately, most of the repair parts are pretty common. Ace has them, so I don't have to go out of there. It's just a matter of taking the time to take it down, take it in, uh, do some, and maybe some light machining, maybe take it over to uh, engine shop and even if I need to do that. Sure. But that's sometime in the future. Okay. Uh, we got the bids back. It's open on the 10th. Uh, just give you a kind of an update for you on some stuff out of what we had out there. There are about seven inquiries from various contractors, uh, some specialists, subcontractors, type people who do electrical, do concrete or uh, some of the portions. Uh, only one bid from a contractor who does the whole thing. Everything. Uh, no local contractors. We did have. Uh, well, is it one already an opinion? He's yeah. I haven't considered okay. across the board. Right. That's okay. not local. Right. Okay. To me, and then we we did have one electrician uh, in the area that did have an inquiry. Is yeah. is Meridian the one that filed the the single bid? It's the only one that filed. Uh, a I I regard them as fairly local. They do work. work so, anyway, oh, the question is, is it over yeah. or under the estimate? You didn't get you didn't bid? You didn't bid. Well, so, well, this, is, years. this is where it gets it gets a bit sticky. Uh, we had one bid, and that bid, I guess I'll start at the top and then I can throw one thing. One bid uh surprised uh, both the consultants, uh project manager, M dot and myself was Five hundred forty-seven thousand wow. seven hundred thirty-nine dollars. So almost five hundred fifty thousand dollars. Who was that from? That yeah, was Meridian. Meridian. Uh, Could you repeat that number, please? Five forty-seven. Five forty-seven seven thirty-nine. And some of you aren't familiar, but Mike is and John is way back when when we did look at this. And January twenty-three, we had gotten some bids from our consultant, which we discussed and felt were maybe a bit high. We did contact some other contractors. Meridian was one and they sent us an estimate which corroborated p and They were pretty close. At that time, uh, Meridian's bid for this project was $330,704. So their bid that they submitted now 66% higher, almost $244,035 higher material. than their estimate a year ago. That's no, uh, no, that's no, surprise. that's not the way it's, it's all material. Material's gone sky high. It, well, wow. this is where, this is where it gets, uh, and, and we were kind of mystified at some things. Uh, and it is what it is. Uh, the contractor is going to bid according to his, uh, his cost structure. And, and that's not much we can do about it. Uh, Brian did talk to Meridian, but. Uh, discuss, see if there's anything they could do with that bid to, to change it. I spent last night, uh, just did Brian looking over, seeing what was eliminated. Since this was reduced to bare bones, uh, there's nothing, anything remotely removable does not put the money anywhere near what we needed or want it to be. A uh, couple things stuck out in the bid. Uh,
for this well, the concrete uh i don't know how it came out to this but uh the consultant bid was uh estimate was about a hundred thousand hundred four thousand dollars for the concrete and foundation the site prep uh, it came in from the contractor is 47.5 uh topsoil for fixing the landscape around it uh consultants estimated cost was twenty five twenty three hundred twenty five dollars the contractor's cost in his bid was eleven thousand nine thousand dollars I paid twenty one dollars a square yard to have topsoil delivered to our home in Poston. Yes, so twenty one dollars. We thirty six dollars a square yard, and the uh, the electrical uh, the estimate for the electrical. Mike, you realize this that there's not a whole lot going on for the electrical in the building. Uh, it was estimated to be twenty two five. Yeah, the bid. Where the electrical work came in at forty thousand. Holy cow! 000. That's that's double. Yeah, so all three of us were shaking our head at what we have here, and obviously it's it's. Yeah, we got to get down and sit down at the table. Who's you know? the subs that he's hiring this morning? He's got to be hiring subcontractors for everything. I, we we don't know that. Well, well. Yeah, uh, he really would probably right. Todd Curtis did <laughs> come to the pre-bid right. meeting, so obviously Todd Curtis would be doing the. Uh, well, the, the he, he would do the prep site work probably. Yeah, he would be doing the, in the, the topsoil, the digging in, in the topsoil. And quite frankly, I, I hate to make light of the topsoil. I think it goes over the fence. Yeah, and I could pick it up with our end loader and take it. But I don't know why the. Oh, well, that's crazy. Yeah, that's. But none of that matters, man. Right. None of that matters. matters. We need. To... And, and, and we can only get what three hundred and something from uh, M dot. We Probably, have uh, score. roughly. Uh, it was 430. But we tapped into some of that, didn't we? Well, we haven't yet. And my plan is I had it. Uh, had this moved forward at this point, uh, that money would have been obligated, committed to the hangar. And then we would have gotten the crack ceiling and right. everything okay. else yeah. on MDOT's dime. Now, since we don't have the money, MDOT will take more than likely take the crack ceiling, which is fifty going to be estimated about $58,000 crack ceiling and painting and so you take that off the top of that, that. probably come out which puts me uh yeah 300 something further behind and yeah uh, so that's where that is and just some other things uh just so you know that we are i i had a plan b and a plan c <clears throat> good and no i didn't say they were good i just had a plan but thank you for that Compliment. It's always good to have plan B and C. We do. You won't like C. B, you probably won't like either. No. But so why would B and C? We did talk about options at this time. Uh was to rebid the hangar as is. There would be a cost to that. And there'd be a cost to all this. It estimated cost would be about twenty five hundred dollars. That would be the cheapest. I uh, Brian doesn't recommend it. I don't either. Uh rebid the box hanger with reduced. Uh, design and performance specs for the contractors. Essentially, the contractors would have a little more leeway in submitting or changing some of their things, and as long as it met with it, that may reduce the cost. But once again, I don't know it, if it's going to it, reduce it enough. It's I don't I don't know that it, it could be, and uh, I don't know whether. Quite frankly, whether that would be an incentive for more contractors to right. Well, anyway, that's true. you yeah. could end up with the same result as number one, two, or what we have now. Uh, the only other thing I brought up uh, back when when we initially discussed this, uh, we we looked at the eighty by eighty hanger, which was too expensive. Uh, we investigated the two T hanger option, which. Uh, we at the cost didn't feel it was I mean, for the money and the difference between that and a 60 by 60 it would be more advantageous to go to 60 by 60 we get more bang for our buck and uh to do that uh to expand the tea hangers we'd be looking at about 15 to twenty thousand for design and uh additional and twenty thousand for construction administration. 
Uh, on the price, uh, Brian did include a 20% contingency to try and cover cost fluctuations. The T hanger, when we first considered it way back when, price was initially about $150,000 for two T hangers. The price went up to $199, it went up again to $233. Last time prior to this, we were at 297 for two. Estimated cost now with the contingency is about $385,000. Plus all your administrative costs and, and all this. And uh, 345 plus design administration oh. except for three, 385. Uh, they talked to Brian, I said, uh, in regard to design costs, uh, he said, estimating costs to be lower in available funding. Uh, he doesn't think the county would require us, in this case, if we went with the, the T's, to front the design costs again. And we should be able to proceed with the 5% match process for design. So we wouldn't have to fund it. We would end up probably having to pay 5%, but we've got to talk to MDOT again to right. make a clarification on their policy. Uh, plan C is uh, the county writes the check for the thing. We get it done and figure out what to do later. And I know you're not going to like that one. <laughs> uh, it's so, April 11th, not April 1. Yeah, it's too so, bad Key uh, Construction didn't bid on that. It would have been half of this. We discuss. What, we go to Plan G. Stay if, stay with what if, we've got, right? If Yeah, I, well, I mean, I... I, uh, I, I know we've a, discussed that. I can't make a decision right. for us. And nope. that's something we're going to all have to right. uh, sit, sit down and discuss together. Sit down and see what we want to do. Uh, maybe in the next couple of days, uh, next week, maybe we'll have a little more information, maybe some other new ideas of what we might be, be able to do. But uh, I do have some uh, calls out uh, to some of the engineered building contractors, and so does uh, Prina Nuha to see. We what, get some more guys to bid on get it. Some, uh, you know, I talked to a friend of mine, one of our uh, seasonal tenants, uh, he's down in Tennessee, and uh, I know there are regional differences in bu building costs, but down there, the one airport they had was getting a engineered steel building, larger than ours. Cost was below anything we had been quoted up to this point. So I wonder why. Uh, huh. Well, we need to go. Well, we'll have to research it now this coming week and see what happens. So number one, they snow. I'll see what we get next week. You know, I'm, I'm serious. To John or you and let you know if yeah. I've got anything. And if I don't, then it's, I guess we decided well, what, what the next step get is. together and see yeah. what we want to do at this point. Uh, yeah. Right now, the money, we don't need to request the money. We're not going to get the money. It's going to sit there. Uh, if we do decide to go forward with something at this point in time, uh, if you went forward to 60 by 60, uh, we still would not start construction more than like if we wouldn't start this fall, but with the delay and having to ask for money, I can almost guarantee it would not start till next spring. Next spring, and if you decided to go with this, uh, 2T hanger. Once again, I think any any construction on any of this is not going to happen. Right. Spring. And then by then, the price is going to go up some more. Anything is possible, and the money expires in August 26th, right? In September, uh, we say goodbye. Of 26? 25, 26. Yeah. Uh, essentially, we. This uh, engineered steel. Oh, uh, we didn't look at that before. We did, and it was out of Mer Meridian's cost was uh, for a sixty by sixty steel versus a sixty by sixty wood frame. They were almost four twenty seven for a steel building, three thirty for the wood, and Crane and Newhoff that they were close to that, and so we decided we could not afford a Cadillac. We went right. to Chevrolet, and now uh, we might have to go with a Yugo or a hitchhiker. <laughs> Yeah. Get the thumbs out, right? Thumbs out. I, I don't. I don't know what the plan is. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk to uh, uh, Steve down at Alpena. Uh, they've got. They yeah. have been forward. Apparently, now they're going to be able to build additional hangers. If you read in the paper, they're looking at. I'm going to see who they've got for contractors. And while we got them in the area, maybe willing to share that information with me. Maybe we can 
you know, contact them and said, say, be in the area that may reduce all of our costs. Sure. Uh, reduce the mobilization costs and something. So, I mean, we, we, we spit all a lot of ideas, uh, yesterday, you know, today. And, um, yeah. Okay. Well, you understand we can't take any action today. So Ex exactly. Yeah. And that's why I didn't right. bring, uh, right. you know, I just give you this stuff, right. something to sleep yeah. on. And, and, uh, <laughs> Okay. Thanks, thanks, Al. All right. <clears throat> um, officer? Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you guys for approving the, the language for the SRO millage. Um, I know we've had the SRO millage for 20 years now. We are decades ahead of Smithdown State with our safety and security. Matt Beeson did a phenomenal job at Roger City School. Uh, James Lady is in his second year in Bozeman, and he's doing a really good job over there. I'm finished up my 10th year here in Ottawa, and we appreciate it. Yep, appreciate Every, it. and everything's going good, too, so that's that's great. Thank you. And How about Marie, you? the new vehicles, are you getting one? I hope so. Yeah. Probably not, but I'll get one on this. We'll I'm get like... the next round. <laughs> well, that's actually a plan. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, uh, as Bridger reported, Val, um, the election commission met this morning and they did appoint Val Peacock as the Dean County Treasurer. Um, Val and I will be working over the next few days as to transitioning and what date she'll actually take the oath of office and stuff like that. So, um, been working just trying to catch up with all the, the stuff that's been going on um, for negotiations and stuff like that. Obviously, coordinating with everybody. Did you receive the recorded mail from Christy Hardy's regarding the court? I got your email, so oh. I will read when I when okay. have the chance as well. Um, the only thing I had is today's my 30th anniversary at the county. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a few of us. Dave was actually, I wish we could, uh, his anniversary wasn't today, of course, but um, you know, there are, are there are now only a handful that are more than me. <laughs> I'm I'm creeping up the list. Um, so congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I started very, very, very young before I could drive. <laughs> How did you start before you could drive if you were in order to take? Um, I started with the, yeah. So I started with the sheriff's department 30 years ago today. Dispatch. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, <laughs> There's not. There's only a one person in the sheriff's department that's got above me. Other than that, everybody else is below her. Oh, Renee. Okay. Yeah, she's only a couple months ahead of just yes. by a couple months. So, like I said, there's only I think five or six of us that are the senior people. <laughs> that's it for me. Okay. Um, just a thank you card from Ms. Uh, uh, Dispatcher Henning that is now retired and um, a letter invite, I guess you kind of say, I don't know if anybody's interested, I could give you a copy, but Family Resource Center, um, the Child Family Services, they do a little, it's called a um, carnival that started a few years ago, but if anybody wanted to. Really yeah, support it, whatever. I'll where, just leave this here. Where is it? Oh, where is it at? Uh, this time it's at Asamique. I don't know if that's where it's always at, but I'll just leave it here for you to read. So that was the only thing that I had just gotten. Motion for payroll. For the motion for the payroll. That was all. At Chapa. Yes. Kalini. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes. Sure. Yes. <laughs> motion carried. Motion to adjourn till April 26, 9 30 a.m. Subject to the call of the chair. Fourth year. Can we have a fourth? Yeah, that's my birthday. What's this fourth year? Your birthday, 26. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.